So, in the last video, we kind of went over drawing lines, and we're just going to keep, keep moving it forward here. And uh, we're going to start drawing some other items here, and I'm just going to kind of put some stuff to play around with. Um, so I'm just kind of drawing some random lines in. Um, I'll be using them for a few different things. Um, some of them I'm actually going to draw to a distance, because otherwise it's really hard to play around with commands sometimes when you don't know what the distance of a line is and you start guessing at radiuses. All right, so now that we got some stuff in here, we're just gonna kind of move, we're gonna skip polylines for right now. We're gonna go over to circles. So um, everybody knows there's two main circles for the most part in AutoCAD and they're pretty simple. Um, start and radius is right here. Um, and again, when you first select it, I mean, always look at the command line or if you're using dynamic input, look next to your mouse. It'll say specify the center point for a circle. So pretty simple, um, you know, and again, you could put an exact coordinate in here or you can go and use your O snaps. And, you know, snap the end of the line, whatever you want to do, and then put a radius in. So I'm going to say I'm doing a radius of two and a half. So now we can click on that. And uh, the cool thing about it is, you know, now that I put a radius of two and a half in, I want to confirm it, right? Just like a lot of things in AutoCAD, Civil 3D, and whatever you're doing, if you just click on something and right click, you'll find most of whatever you want to do to that object, like scale it, rotate it, erase it, stuff like that. Um, also, you'll find usually properties. And from here, you can double check and see it's a diameter of five and a radius of two and a half. So again, it's another quick way. Um, I always tell people when in doubt, click on something, right click and see what you can do. Um, odds are your answer's in here somewhere. Um, but anyway, so that's just drawing a circle by radius. Um, next, drawing a circle by diameter, it's the same thing. Um, to be honest, you could just go to circle by radius here, uh, pick a point, and then if you look at the bottom right hand of your screen right here, you'll see, specify cir radius a circle or diameter, and then enter the diameter. So if I wanted a diameter of six, um, honestly, I would hit D to switch to diameter. Like we learned in the other uh, video about lines, if you look at whatever the capital letter is, and it's sometimes, and I think it's in blue, um, if you hit D, it'll switch you to diameter. So now I can enter a diameter of six, and it'll put it in. So you really only need one circle button, but they give you two under the tool, or sorry, under the panel here. Uh, so you have center, center radius and center diameter. Now there's another two of them on here, two points, so you can go between two points like so, um, or you can give it three points, um, so one, two, and then a third, uh, whatever you're looking to do there, so that's a three point. Um, but there's also some other cool ones in here I wanted to go over. So one of them's called, uh, I call it circle tan tan tan, or just tan 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 under the circle pull down. And basically what you're gonna do is give it three tangents, tangent, tangent, tangent. And it basically fits the circle right within the block there. <clears throat> the other one is circle tan tan radius. Um, there's another command called fillet, um, which does something similar, but not exactly the same. But sometimes fillet doesn't work and tan tan radius will always get you out of a pinch. Um, so basically you're gonna do the same thing as you did with tan tan tan, except you're giving it a tangent, a tangent, and a radius, just like it says. So tan, tan, and then at the bottom left-hand corner or next to my cursor, You'll see it's asking me for a radius. I'm going to enter two, enter, and it puts our circle in that fits perfectly tangent with those two lines. Same can be said if I use these two here, it would just fit it in right there. Um, so to be honest, that's all there really is to circles. Um, you'll notice that you get that you could build a lot of different things off of them. Um, a lot of times you're going to get a part that might contain a few circles. Um, let me get out of there. So if I had a part like this. And you know, maybe I'm making a, a fidget spinner, right? Those things are now popular nowadays. So um, if I wanted to draw something here and I wanted to go from the center, oh, sorry, line, and I'm gonna go tangent to here, and then shift and right click again, which brings up my O snap, tangent to here. And then the same thing again, line, shift right click, tangent, shift right click, tangent. Again, I don't have my O snaps on. I'm manually going through them just hold, by holding shift and right click. And I can kind of make uh, sort of my own version of a fidget spinner, we'll say. Um, now we can use another command called trim. And what trim will do is I can select these lines as cutting edges. So basically as if I don't want this part, this part, or his, this part here. So I want to trim these out. So I'm going to select here and here to get rid of here. And you'll see it in a second. So first thing it asks you to do is to select your cutting edge. You'll see it right here, select cutting edges and then select objects. So this will be my cutting edges. I'm gonna hit enter, and then I can remove these pieces here if I wanted to. So you can use circles to kind of create objects, do whatever you wanna do. Um, we could do the same thing here, oops. So let's say, you know, I have these three pieces here, tangent, uh, tangent, 
and uh, I'm gonna put another circle in here and make it tangent, tangent, tangent. You know, and then I could honestly just put a circle right in the center of this guy, like so. You know, whatever you wanna do. Um, so you can kind of mess with circles as much as you like, but again, you could do a lot of neat things with them. In fact, some of the drawings we're gonna do in the beginning, which are honestly just simple little parts. Um, you mostly just plates and stuff and just learning how to draw, and then maybe I'll throw an architectural one in there. Um, stuff like that, and maybe I'll even throw some surveying and some civil stuff, but most of that stuff's done in civil 3D nowadays, so it might not exactly be the best help, but you never know. Um, you also have arcs. Now, arcs kind of work the same way. I'll kind of pick one of the more popular ones, and you guys can kind of play around with these. Um, so, you get a whole slew of different ones. Three-point arc. Um, usually, I mostly use start, end, radius, so again, it's exactly that. I got a start, I got an end, and then I'm going to give it a radius. Um, and again, it kind of matters in which direction you select in. So if I do that same command again, start and radius, because again, see how it dipped down? So let's say you wanted to go the other way, you would just reverse the direction. So not too bad, but uh, you should know that again, sometimes these commands are uh, kind of order of operation sensitive. So if I draw it in that direction, it's pretty much going to go this way here. Um, and again, remember, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So again, try to draw counterclockwise. This motion here is probably the most important. So I'm going to draw something real quick here. In fact, you know what? I can just use my X lines to do it. So there's a command called X line. And basically, it puts a line in uh, infinite directions. And I can say vertical, and it just kind of selects it in there. So yeah, as far as I zoom out, it creates lines in all directions. So I just type in XL. Um, so, just real quick, somebody had asked me um, a question, and I just wanted to make sure I answered it. So, really what we're looking at here, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here so it's easier for everybody to see. And again, there's other ways to do it, and I'm just going to kind of showing off all that go into properties and looking. So, 0 and 360 is in this direction here. And I know some of this, some people are like, well, Brandon... You know, I didn't know this. I don't really, you know, care. Well, you know, not everybody knows their their direction. So um, we're just going to kind of give them a brief rundown here. So in this direction, it's 180. And if you ever wondered why AutoCAD thinks the way it thinks, this should kind of give you a good idea of it. Because look at the way it works. So 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 degrees. So... 360 comes all around. Um, so this is kind of just a really quick, you know, if you're looking to go which in which direction. So if you went, you know, 145, it's going to go up in this direction. If you go at an angle of 75, it's going to go in this direction. So knowing your directions kind of helps when navigating Civil 3D. Even if you're just doing something to kind of print it on a 3D printer, you have no idea what you're doing. You're just kind of drawing or even tracing something. Um, you know, it's good to know your general directions because uh, a lot of times it may ask you a question and you'll be like, uh, I don't know. So again, just remember 0, 90, 180, 270, and then all the way back around to 0 again, 360 degrees. Um, so to be honest, that's all there really is, and I'm not going to go through each one of these, but again, if it says start and angle, you need a start starting point, an end point, and then give it an angle. Um, for all of these things here, they kind of all tell you the exact same thing. Now, there's another command that I kind of talked about a second ago, and <clears throat> it was called fillet. So, looking here, you'll see the fillet command. Now, what fillet does is it'll automatically round this corner for me. So, similar to what you saw tan tan radius did with putting a circle in the corner, or a tangent to two lines, technically speaking, is what it did, um, this will kind of only work on corners. Um, also, you could do tricks, so I'll also do something like this, and I'll show you in a second what I can do there. So, um, so for instance, I'm going to do a fillet. And if, again, looking at the bottom here, looking at the corner, it asks, I got radius, right? So R, enter for radius. So I'm going to do a radius of 1. So I just want a little 1 foot, you know, dealy on here. See it? Kind of just turn. You can kind of see the preview real quick. Now, a lot of people, oh, I don't need to click. It just did it. Ah, it's just previewing what it's going to do. That's sort of a new AutoCAD thing. It's been around for a little bit, but um, to some of the people, I think it's annoying. I, I'd rather it just not do it. I know what it's going to do. But anyways, it's there. So I'm going to click, and you'll see it just kind of adds a nice little round there. And again, I can put another radius on it, so maybe that radius is a little too small. It's not easy visible. 
I can click here and here and then it leaves the old one behind but it kind of just rounds a corner for you now we can take this concept and do something a little bit different with it so I'm gonna go back into the fillet command I'm gonna hit R for radius and I'm gonna set my radius to zero now and honestly watch this I'll just make a little simple corner so if you ever want two lines to meet and form a corner easy fillet radius zero and it'll automatically do it from whatever however far away they are I mean it could be like that fillet radius zero boom boom so not too bad and you'll notice I'll type my commands in a little bit um, so here's fillet but pretty much everything can be worked with by hitting F for fillet L for line C for circle um, you always have those people you go to their desks and they change what C does they change C to copy and CI to certain you know people can change those commands but out of the box by default C is circle L is line F is fillet and if you ever forget a command or you just can't find it type it in line enter does the same thing circle all right and if all else fails and AutoCAD just won't work and nothing's working all your commands say undefined if you ever put a dot in front of your command and do line it pretty much puts you right in the line command if you're having that error um, I haven't seen it happen in a very long time but it used to happen a lot so um, so all cool tricks that you guys can use on a day-to-day -day basis so that's how you use the following two tools and the fillet command